about continuing a movement. The first Earth Day was a movement that's grown in 39 years. And the reason I think this one is so important is that I think we have a moment. I think we have a moment in our country that's not unlike the first Earth Day. You know, we don't have uh, Hayesfield air and we don't have burning rivers, but what we do have is an economy that's in crisis and a, and a manufacturing base that's gone. But we have a president who sees that our way out of these economic crises is to grow a green economy. So to me, we just have a moment. We have a moment when, once again, the earth is important, not just because of the problems that we face, but because it's going to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the partnership with the Boys and Girls Club. So eventually, how many kids are going to be involved with this through the 60 Boys and Girls Clubs? Well, you know, um, Roxanne has grown the Boys and Girls Club to almost 5 million kids now. And I know she has ambitious plans to grow it even further. So all the kids will be involved? Yeah, what they're trying to do is incorporate the message of energy stewardship and the environment into the Boys and Girls Club, you know, successful model. They have a model that works. They reach kids. What they're doing is helping us get the message that part of the job that young folks can do is to be aware of the environment and work on its behalf. And can you talk a little bit about why you chose this bottom-up approach, sort of educating the kids to educate their parents? Well, because it's worked before. I mean, we'll, we'll take any approach when it comes to environmental education that works, but we know that one thing about the environmental movement, young people understand it, young people get it. That's appropriate because they're the ones who are going to inherit the earth when we're done with it. So. Um, we, we don't have only one approach, but one of the things that we know is that young kids can go home and their parents will listen to them because I have yet to meet the parent, whether it's in the corporate boardroom or an environmental advocate, who you can't reach by talking to them about their children and making sure the earth is safe for them. Okay, one more question. I know you, I know you have a, a number of priorities coming in as the new administrator. Um, I wonder if you can talk about that and within that context talk about how the recent announcement about greenhouse gas emissions as a pollutant fits into to your priorities and how you hope that that uh, particular initiative will be implemented or maybe complemented or maybe replaced by other initiatives that are legislative or um, economic based. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, our overarching priority is to put EPA back square in the focus of the American people to tell them that we know that it is our job to protect their health and to protect the environment mm -hmm. and to protect our planet. Uh, we want people to think of that and think of the EPA and we want them to know we're on the job working for them. We are a service organization. After that, we're about science, we're about the law, and we're about transparency. So we don't ever have another time like we've had in the past eight years where people wondered whether EPA was being allowed to speak and then scratched their heads about what we said when we did speak. We're trying to make sure that th those overarching principles are enforced. We want clean air, uh, greenhouse gases. Yesterday's finding means that an acknowledgement on the part of this country, first time ever, that greenhouse gases are pollution. We know about pollution in this country. We know about air pollution. And to put that in context, you know, we have a Clean Air Act that deals with pollution. It is my fervent hope that we will soon have um, a law, a new law, that deals with greenhouse gas pollution and that complements that with a whole suite of measures to move us to a greener energy economy. But we also have to worry about clean water. We're going to be dealing with toxics and cleaning up our land. And most importantly, we're going to make sure the EPA is there for every single American. Low-income Americans, people of color, people just like these kids who are going to grow up to see a very different EPA and a very different environment if we're successful.